is that? Seriously, that of course is the sound of the naturally aspirated 3.2 litre 24 valve VR6 V6 from a 2008 Mark V Volkswagen Golf R32 before turbocharged four cylinders took over the world and the R32 became the Golf R. Anyway, this car lives in Tasmania, so it's a little bit cold and a little bit windy, but we're here to drive it as the owner has been kind enough to sling us the keys. Let's check it out. Finished in the car's iconic deep blue pearl paint, this particular R32 really is the ultimate gentleman spec hot hatch, a five door DSG. On the outside at the front end here, we can see this matte aluminium look grille, which was unique to the R32 with larger front intakes. Although to be honest, a lot of those intakes are actually blocked off behind the, uh, behind the air guides there. It also had auto leveling bison on headlights and standard, it had these 18 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels. Inside the wheels, you've got blue painted brake calipers, they're single piston front and single piston rear clamping three 45 mil ventilator discs up front and three 10 millimeter discs at the back. Speaking of at the back, it's pretty hard to miss those two twin centrally mounted stainless steel polished exhaust pipes. There's also a black rear diffuser, just black plastic. And if we go up the top here, you'll see this roof mounted rear spoiler. The R32 also came standard with this fairly mild body kit which included those slightly deeper side skirts. It also left the factory sitting 20mm lower than a standard Mark V Golf, which means it sat 5mm lower than a standard Mark V Golf GTI. You'll notice too that just walking around the car there's not actually a single Golf badge anywhere on it. There's the rear R32 badge just there. And at the front, there's only that front R32 badge there. While we're at the front, why don't we pop the bonnet and have a look at that awesome sounding engine. And there it is. There's the little guy making all that noise. So this was a tweaked version of the naturally aspirated 3.2 litre 24 valve VR6 V6 engine from the Mark IV. Uh, Golf R32. It did get a uh, revised intake manifold helping bump power up from 177 kilowatts to 184 kilowatts or 250 horsepower. Torque remained at 320 newton meters but the peak did come in earlier, 300 rpm earlier at 2500 rpm instead of 2800 rpm. Inside if we have a look the R32 Golf got these uh, aluminium style strips. They're also along the, the driver's side of the dash there and on the passenger dash. And also down in that little storage cubby down there. It also got these uh, leather heated sports seats and they've got the uh, R logo that you can see there as well. There was also the leather gear knob and this flat bottom leather R32 stamped multifunction steering wheel. If we have a look down here there's also R logos on the sports pedals and on also on the uh, this floor mounted uh, accelerator that you can see there as well. Back in 2008, satellite navigation, front and rear parking sensors, an electric sunroof, an electric driver's seat and Recaro bucket seats were all options. And while this car did actually get the sunroof, which you can see up there, and the electric driver's seat, that's it. It's worth noting too that at the time, although they were really, really cool looking seats, those Recaro bucket seats were around $4,000 for the pair of them. We can see that storage is pretty good. You've got felt line door pockets there. There's also, if we jump in, out of the wind, there's also, like I said, that little storage cubby down there. You've got a uh, center console bin there with an auxiliary port in it as well as well as cup holders just here and I've got to show you this because it's just infinitely cool this little divider that you have there it's actually a bottle opener that's a 
very handy Volkswagen device. That's, that's standard, that's very cool. Another thing I have to show you while we're here is in the chillable glove box, tucked up on that top shelf there, is this really nice leather bound R32 owner's manual, and this is the original owner's manual. So the rest of it's probably not all that exciting. Um, all the usual things in there, but I really like that it's just a bit of nice detail there that you've got the original owner's manual. That looks quite cool. Not bad for its day. The Mark V Golf R32 also scored an auto dimming rear view mirror, auto headlights and wipers, cruise control, a tire pressure sensor, six airbags and electronic stability control, and a 10 speaker stereo with a six disc CD changer. Remember them? If we look in the back, there was actually plenty of room. If we jump in, again, out of the wind, you've got mat pockets, you've got rear air vents, you've got extra cup holders down there, and again, decent door pockets. You've also got this fold down center armrest there, and a handy ski port. How's that for practicality? And one more thing, handy releases meant that you could drop your rear seats. Like that to give you a bit extra volume from your boot. That was already pretty, pretty decent. You've actually got some uh, uh, luggage hooks there perfect for shopping, and under the floor was a space saver spare tire. This car's not that old, but I do really like that it still has a proper key that you've got to put in and turn to fire things up. Oh, oh I do really like these things. <laughs> Let's go for a drive. It's hard to believe that the 2008 Mark V Volkswagen Golf R32 is 10 years old. <laughs> That's crazy. It doesn't feel like a 10 year old car. Uh, probably with the exception of maybe lacking something like a big touch screen, uh, blind spot monitoring and a reversing camera. It doesn't really feel that dated in here. Admittedly too, this car's just about to tick over 53,000 K. So it's been well loved, well cared for. It's a pretty good example. For those who don't know, the Mark V Golf R32 was the second generation of the R32. The Mark IV R32 launched back in 2002. The Mark V stuck with pretty much the same recipe as the Mark IV though, tying that awesome 3.2 litre naturally aspirated V6 with Volkswagen's Haldex based on-demand four motion four-wheel drive system. Now being an on-demand system it's not full-time all-wheel drive and that means that the rears only really come into play when the fronts begin to lose traction but particularly on a smooth stretch of road the car just has so much stability and competency, it's pretty impressive. The original Mark IV Golf R32 was only sold in Australia with a six-speed manual transmission, which was interesting because in Europe, the car was actually one of the first Volkswagens ever to be sold with a DSG transmission. The Mark V, on the other hand, was available with either a six-speed manual or what this car has, the six-speed DSG. And I can understand why a lot of people would have opted for the DSG, like the owner of this car did. I mean, you could just leave it in drive, you could flick it down into sport mode, or you could take a bit more control and use these steering wheel mounted shift paddles. Going with the DSG also meant the car claimed a 0 to 100 time of 6.2 seconds instead of 6.5 with the manual. The catch of going with the DSG, of course, was, especially in the early days, it's not the best gearbox, especially around town, low speed, taking off from lights, 
roundabouts, that sort of thing, it can be quite jerky and you really do have to adjust your throttle position and drive with a bit more patience around town. On roads like this though, it's really not an issue. Whether it's up or down the gearbox, it may not be as fast as modern cars, but it's still pretty responsive and it slams through the shift reasonably quickly. When the car was new, it got a lot of praise for its ride handling balance, for a reasonably compliant ride around town and then genuine performance attributes when you get up it. <laughs> it still feels that way today. It can be a bit sharp off poorer road surfaces and imperfections, hit a bump and you will know about it, but the car sits so flat and responds really well to steering inputs. The steering itself is a little bit weighty, especially compared to say a 7.5 Golf R, but it's very accurate. It's just lacking some of that feedback. It's not as dead as some of the earlier Volkswagen and Audi product. And you can trust it, trust it all the way through corners but it's just not brimming with feedback, if you like. Now, something that also got talked about a little bit was the car's weight. It was 1,530 kilograms, which, look, it's not super heavy, but it's no lightweight either. It was 50 kilos heavier than the Mark IV, but for context, it's 100 kilograms heavier than a 7.5 Golf R. I used to have a nine end Polo GTI and that was about 1190 kilograms, so a lot lighter than this. It had that nimble, chuckable feeling to it. You could move it around and change the weight transition a lot. Now, this doesn't have that sort of dynamic agility, but even with the weight, with the help of that four motion four wheel drive and a really sorted chassis, it changes directions <laughs> and loves getting after it. It really does. The other thing that gives you confidence is these brakes. They look cool, but they also stop really, really well. Like the Mark IV did before it, the Mark V Golf R32 was dubbed the most powerful Golf of all time when it first launched. And with 184 kilowatts, it was. Peak power kicks in at 6,300 RPM according to the spec sheet, but it's such a torquey motor down low, even without the help of a turbocharger. From below 3,000 RPM, it still picks up good pace, but that noise, that noise that you want, that noise <laughs> really kicks in at about three and a half to 4,000 RPM. 10 years on, there is just no doubt that this car is still an absolute classic. It might not be as fast as some of its successes, but it's just such a cool car, just such a cool car. And like I said, for me, even though I'd get a three door manual, it's the ultimate gentleman's hot hatch. It looks ace, it's got room for the family, there's a boot and back seats that are actually practical. And then when you get a road to yourself, it absolutely delivers. Plus, when it sounds like this. <laughs> As if you would ever get sick of making that noise. I love this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna try and squeeze in a few more Ks before I've got to hand this thing back. What an awesome car. Anyway, if you've got any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And remember to subscribe. See ya.